Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and these are my 10 best crowdfunding campaigns from 2022. This is not our regular two back or not to back. We're skipping that this week. The end of the year, we tend to jump around a bit, skip some, do others. We'll figure it all out. But for this week, instead, we have the 10 best crowdfunding campaigns of 2022, according to me, obviously. And yes, of course, there's more than 10. It wouldn't be a Board Game Co top 10 list without that. But before we dive into that list and timestamps and links and all those things down below, but before we dive into that list, we have a note from our sponsor, WSB. BG. The Real Series of Board Gaming had this the first event this past September in 2022, and they'll be doing it again this next year in 2023 again, again out in Valleys in Las Vegas. They'll be doing it again, another hosting another Real Series of Board Gaming, going through the best person who plays all the games and all those things. You'll be competing in a whole bunch of different possible events. You can choose different events to play. You can play in Terraforming Mars, in Azul, in Splendor, in Ticket to Ride, or in Dune Imperium Seven Wonders, in Patchwork, or Wingspan, or Choir. There are 16 different games you can play in. You pick the games, they have a bunch of different packages you can pick, so you can go ahead and choose a, a four game package, pick the games that you are the best at, and if you win those, you have the opportunity to go on to the next round, the next round, the next round, ideally until you are crowned the World Series of Board Gaming winner in 2023. This is a, an event that I loved it last year, I had a great time, yes they are sponsoring this, but yes I did a full video talking about it, and also if you want to save $40 off of some of the ticket prizes, some of the packages, some of the, the higher price package, if you want to save $40 off of those, I'll have a link down below, you can use Use my code, get $40 off, and that's the Rural Series of Board Gaming. Great event. Tom Vassal loved it. I loved it. A bunch of other people loved it as well. I'm just uh, focusing on those two for this moment. But with that, let's go ahead and dive into the lit video. Although one more, one more instruction before we do, which is this particular series, this particular batch of games, there's well, 14 that we have over here. I managed to get 14 into this conversation. But if you want to find the 15 other games that I was trying to pick from, basically, I tried to condense this list as much as I possibly could, going over every single campaign that really I fell in love with, that really I wanted to back, that really I wanted to pick, or many of these, I, I think I did back all of these, but I wanted to pick for this top 10 list. If you want to see the other 15, you can head on over to my Patreon. Over on Patreon, I'll be doing a full other, you know, top 15 that didn't make the cut. And in fact, over the next month or so, as we do the end of the year list, I'll be having a bunch of bonus content over on Patreon. So if you are on the fence, if you wanted to jump in, now's a good time to jump in over on Patreon. There's a ton of content over there. I don't really do a lot of pushes for Patreon, but I do have, you know, 130 videos, 112 posts, whole bunch of polls, audio releases. I have a whole bunch of content over on Patreon. I don't push it a lot, but right about now, there'll be a bunch of bonus content over on Patreon. So if you want to sign up, now is a good time to do so. You can go ahead and pay $5 a month and then, you know, just say, save it for a single month and watch all the 2022 extra lists that are coming your way. But with that said, let's go ahead and start this off, starting off with the three that are not on the list at all. These are examples of games that do not, that weren't really eligible for the list. In fact, we have one for GameFound, Backkit, and Kickstarter. And the GameFound one is the Great Wall Reprint. The Great Wall Reprint, despite being a 2022 title, is not really eligible for this list because anything that was more focused on not really new content, I didn't really pick as much. The Great Wall Reprint was a pure reprint campaign. Yes, it's an amazing game. Yes, I highly recommend it, but I already had it, and the crowdfunding campaign for me was before 2022, so this one didn't really count. Similar story for Ost One over here. Ost One as well had the same problem, which is they had to reprint a second edition campaign, and I love this game. It's incredible. But at the same time, the content they had in the campaign over here wasn't really enough to intrigue me as uh, on its own standalone as far as the content goes. So Ost One, great, amazing game, but also not really eligible for this because I'm trying to pick games that the crowdfunding campaign itself hooked me and not just that I already know and love the game. And then thirdly, in back here, we have a similar situation, although this one is one that I did consider adding to the list, but we have Spirit Island Nature Incarnate, Again, on the list, even though this one does give you a full expansion, I don't think I knew nearly enough about what the expansion adds or brings to the table other than additional spirits. So as much as I love Spirit Island, as much as I'm very excited for this one, I didn't count this one either for that exact same reason, which brings us finally to our number 11 pick. The number 11 pick from this list out of, you know, these three don't really count. They're not even in it. They're just examples of what I'm not counting. But the number 11 is going to be Quad Heroes. And Quad Heroes was a hard one for me because Quad Heroes I do love. And this one does fall a little bit well past the idea of pure expansion content because I am very excited for this campaign because this campaign is making Quad Heroes easier to table and giving you solo content. It wasn't enough that I wanted to put this early on the list because I do have Quad Heroes, I already love Quad Heroes, but the fact that this is making the game easier to table did still have it as my number 11 game of all time, not of all time, that's not why I said that, my number 11 Kickstarter of 2022 or crowdfunding campaign. Quad Heroes second edition is bringing you a reprint if you want more content for the game, but it's also bringing you an upgrade pack for giving you, you know, colored painted miniatures to give you more accessible rule books, content, scenario guides, all of that. I 
I love Quad Heroes. I think Quad Heroes is an excellent sandbox game that gives you a, gives you a variety of ways to play the game. Competitive, solo, cooperative, a bunch of ways to go ahead and explore from pick up and deliver, from racing, different encounters and modes you can have in this game, and a ton of variety to the experience between all the items. This is a game that I don't play often, but every time I do, I'm reminded of why it stays in my collection time and time again. And this Kickstarter over here gave me the potential promise, the opportunity of being a game that I am more likely to table and play because this makes it more accessible. So it just managed to move out of the cut. It's my number 11, but it absolutely does count. And with that, we move to my number 10 on the list, which is Role Player Adventures Reprint and New Expansion. This is my 10th favorite crowdfunding campaign of, well, 2022. This one is number 10 because I still haven't finished Roleplay Adventures, uh, so I am excited for the more content, but I'm not currently quite as excited because, well, I haven't finished Roleplay Adventures, and I will dive into the expansion content. I will go through the full Gulpax of Secret campaign. I know because I've already gone through the first two missions of it, and I'm happily going to dive back into it. I think it's an eight-mission campaign going through that, eight adventures in the in the book, uh, but this is more Roleplay Adventures content. Roleplay Adventures is a game that I totally was very dismissive of before I knew anything about it. I was like, hey, you know what? I didn't love Roleplay. I don't think I'm going to love roleplayer in a more campaign format, but I did play it and I, I do love it. It really gives you an, one of the best choose your own adventure games that really makes you feel as you play through it. It really makes you feel the, the impact of your decisions. In fact, Gold Pack's a secret, even more so than the base game, even in just the few adventures we dove into, gave us some really interesting choices that sparked, 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 that sparked conversation around the moral and ethical dilemmas of the things we were doing. So it's a game that made us feel, it's a game that made us choose, it's a game that gives you choose your own adventure, gives you items, gives you dice manipulation, and gives you a challenge of an experience. I've really enjoyed roleplay adventures, and Gulp Pack's Secret definitely counts as being, I think it's one of two, I think it's two, uh, it depends how you count it, it's, there's some other content through this as we go through these ten campaigns, but roleplay adventures is my number ten. Which brings me to my number nine. My number nine is Race to the Raft. And I believe Race to the Raft is one of only two games on this entire top 10 list, or even top 11 list, that I haven't played. For the most part, these games are games I had an opportunity to play. One of the reasons they are my favorite California campaigns is because I already know how much I like those games. But Race to the Raft from Frank West from the design of the Isle of Cats, this one fully and 100% captured my imagination, captured my attention of being the kind of game I think I'll love, which granted doesn't set this up, that does set this game up well as being one of my potential, you know, biggest disappointments of 2023. This does tend to happen. Sometimes you get excited about a game and you fall in love with the game, but if you haven't played the game, that is setting up a game well to be a big disappointment or alternatively to deliver on what you thought you liked about it. I don't think this will be a disappointment. Time will tell and we'll still talk about that in 2023 list. But for 2022, this is one of my top 10 most anticipated Kickstarters crowdfunding campaigns because of just what the game seems to be doing. It has cards that you're going to be trying to turn over these cards and overlay these cards onto the board as the, the, the map slowly burns down around you. But by overlaying cards, which is a general genre that I love doing to begin with, this is going to be helping you move cats along the puzzle. The Kickstarter video for this game does an excellent job of compelling you, of showing you exactly what kind of game it is. And this gives you a bunch of scenarios to go through, both in the crowdfunding campaign itself, as well as the, the extra stuff you get. There's going to be a ton of scenarios to go through that add more and more progressively more difficult things to manage as you try to overlay overlay cards and bring your cats from wherever they're trapped all the way to the raft, you're racing to the raft before everything burns down around you. The type of puzzle it is makes me think I will thoroughly enjoy it. It's just me thinking I'll thoroughly enjoy it. Time will ultimately tell. To be fair, I thought Isle of Cats would be a dead, dead, dead seller, dead ringer. I thought Isle of Cats would be the perfect game for me, and Isle of Cats to me didn't quite land, although Isle of Cats Explore and Draw very much did land. But Race to the Raft, my number nine, very excited for this one. My number eight is a game I've been talking about since I played, which is Last Light from Grey Fox Games, from Roy Cannon and Grey Fox Games. Last Light is my number eight, and yes, this is one I had a chance to play, and yes, this is one I'm very excited for. I still want to play this one. I want to try an eight-player game of this. In fact, I'm, I'll be at Dice Tower West. I believe I'm trying to get set up for like an eight-player game of Last Light with Roy and all that, but it's one that I played this four players. I played it two players. I played it three players. I played it... I haven't played it solo. I've played it two, three, and four. I've enjoyed it at all player counts, and it's given you a very solid experience at all player counts. Even two, which is a very different experience because of how directly competitive you are in the game, all of them worked well. All of them played in under that hour count, giving you a 4x experience that just consistently delivers. If I had to pick my favorite crowdfunding games in 2022, well, here's my number eight. It's Last Light from Roy Canada, and that's before trying it in the, you know, higher player counts. I am curious, how does this game do at five, at six, at seven, at eight? It's simultaneous play in what you're doing doing is only a few parts we have to take turns in terms of the resolution of what you're doing. For the most part, you're doing your own engine, being mindful of the constant threat around you in the galaxy, but it moves fast, it delivers an excellent experience. I, it's 
It's one of those games you kind of have to play to really get a feel for it, but this is Last Life from Roy Kennedy, my number 8. My number 7 is Slay the Spire, the board game from Contention Games. Slay the Spire is possibly the most recent... Slay the Spire is the second most recent, I want to say, in terms of the, the end of year 2022 cycle. There are a lot of games to pick from. Again, over on Patreon, I'll have a video of the other 15 games if you want to check that out. The other 15 that did not make the cut. But for number seven is Slay the Spire. Slay the Spire, the board game, bringing you the digital adaptation to your table, and it gives you the same basic gameplay, which is one thing that I talked about in my previous videos around the game, which is if you're someone who thinks that there's no need for a physical game of if you like the digital version, well, then you probably shouldn't get this game. You should only get this game if if you think Slay the Spire the board game, I wonder if it does does the video game a good a good uh, adaptation, if it's a good adaptation of the game. And if you're wondering that, the answer is yes. Yes, it does. It does an excellent job of adapting the video game that's really a card game back into a card game format. So if you want that, yes, this does deliver. But yes, it's more expensive than the video game. And yes, it has to have more setup and tear down than the video game. That's the very nature of what it is, but it will give you the tactile experience and it will enable you to play it with other players as well at the same time to play it cooperatively and go through that experience. I love Slay the Spire, I've loved Slay the Spire the video game, and I love Slay the Spire the, the card game as well. It just gives you a lot of fun. Like, I mean, look at these extras you get over here. Look at these deluxe, the acrylic heart, tea, heart keys, the claw dice, the claw pack, all these fun little things over here. This is a very, very solid game. Very accessible, very easy, plays well solo, plays well multiplayer, gives you a ton of ascension levels to just constantly ramp up the difficulty. This very much delivered on what I wanted out of Slay the Spire, which is why it's my number seven. Which brings me to my number six, which is Unsettled. This is another one that has expansion content that arguably should should not be on the list. Arguably it shouldn't because strictly speaking this falls into the same bundle as Spirit Island. It's a game that I have plenty of content already and I don't need the expansion content so the expansion content shouldn't be enough to really push me over but in Unsettled even though I haven't gone through all the planets so far I like Unsettled enough, I love Unsettled enough that this one definitely was when I was just weighing up what I was and wasn't excited about more content, more planets for Unsettled definitely was on the list. I adored this experience. I adored the puzzle of this experience. To me, Unsettled and Vindication before it, both from Orange Nebula, give you a puzzle of trying to take into account a whole bunch of things and trying to figure out the optimal way to survive or to win, depending on which game you're playing, between those. To me, they do have very similar DNA while managing to feel very different at the same time. One's competitive, one's cooperative, and the way they give you those different tools and those different, different levers and, and, and buttons to press in order to win, they give you very different implementations of what you're doing while capturing the same feeling. I think if you like one, you are likely, not guaranteed, to like the other. Unsettled gives you a bunch of comedy and character and story and gives you all those things while giving you a puzzle that you have to work with. It plays well solo, it plays well at two, it plays well at three. I don't think I'd play it at four again. I think two would be my sweet spot. Three is doable and one one is very solid as well. Playing it solo, managing everything completely yourself was, was fun. I have a film playthrough over my channel. You can check that out. This is Unsettled, my number six of, well, 2022. Then my number five is going to be a game found campaign. Number five is going to be 20 Strong from Ship Theory Games. This is the other one on the list that I have not played. The rest of these have, games that have been games that I've all played. For me, uh, uh, Race to the Raft and 20 Strong are the only two on the list I have not played. But 20 Strong by Chip 3 Games did manage to capture my attention by the very nature of what it's doing. To begin with, it's um, we're, we're kind of stuck on this over here. There we go. So I got stuck on a little thing over there. But 20 Strong, 20 Strong from Chip 3 Games is giving you the Chip 3 Games experience. It's giving you in a small accessible package with that delightful little foil card that just shines back and forth as I try to figure out how to make those... It looks, it looks very, very cool. But 20 Strong is giving you a dice puzzle, a solo dice puzzle, specifically as far as rolling dice and ta taking down a bunch of iterative challenges until you eventually make your way towards the end, slowly having to exhaust dice along the way and making sure that you have your 20 Strong Warriors left to able to help you take down the final enemies by the time you get to the end of it. The game comes with a bunch of different themes to it. We have the, you know, to whatever these are called, I can't remember what they're called, the, um, I don't know, the Solar Sentinels. Then we have the uh, Victorum and Too Many Bones decks as well. And they've already announced the fact that they're going to be doing other decks. They have three decks lined up with Mandy Trembley, so there's going to be more content for this, and I imagine that you'll see versions of Burn Cycle and all their properties and and and, and uh, Cloud Spire and everything that they've done. I imagine we'll see different properties from Chip Theory Games implementing over here, including a... What's the word for it? Oh my gosh, including the the uh, the Elder Scrolls as well. These are all guesses. None of these are confirmed or guaranteed. These are just all things I just have to imagine they'll have content for it. But yeah, 20 Strong. Very excited for this one. Look at this. They have the three over here. They have the three lined up and then more, more, more coming until eventually you have your giant, giant trove chest worth of 20 Strong decks all lined up for you. But yeah, that's 20 Strong. Very excited for this one. My number five is also, that's my number, uh, is my number five. My number four my number four is also going to be a game found campaign, and this is Castle Burgundy Special Edition by Awaken Realms. 
This is my number four pick as far as the games I'm most excited for, the crowdfunding campaigns I'm most excited for, because this gives me Castle of Burgundy, a game I already know and love, with a more deluxe table presence, which I'm still cautious to the fact that it might not work for me, but I think ultimately it likely will. I think this will give me a table presence I care about. I think this will give me a game that, I mean, I already know I love the game. I don't know anything about the Vineyards expansion. That I'll have to take time to find out. But the game, I think, I mean, I know I love the game. I'm curious to see whether the miniatures, just having miniatures for every single thing, whether that will enhance the experience or distract from the experience. I know in the case of games like Foundations of Rome, it's absolutely enhanced the experience, but that's a different game and I don't know how this will be implemented. I don't know what the incident will be like. I don't know what the table, I don't, there's a lot of question marks I have. What I do know is I like what I see so far and I'm curious to see whether that will hold up, both in terms of the general graphic design improvements as well as in terms of the miniature improvements. So I'm very curious to see what this one will do and how this one will do. I'm excited. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. I am excited for this game, and I'm looking forward to this game, and I, I just... I mean, look at it. It's just more It's more miniatures, more deluxe presents, more art, better everything for the game. We have upgraded hex tiles. Oh my gosh, these... See, even these right here, I'm just looking at these right now. I want all of these for the deluxified table presence. This is definitely a case of just taking a game that I already know I love and trying to see if this adds more to just what the table presence is. Everything over here... I mean, look at this stuff. It's just, it just looks overall. Where are the miniatures? We have the 3D terrain pack with sun drop over here, giving you all of these. Just look everything you have, all the buildings you're going to add to the game. This is going to enhance your Castle Bur I should rephrase that. This will likely enhance your Castle of Burgundy experience, although I am prepared for the fact that the miniatures might end up being overkill, although I'm curious. I'm curious what the board will look like. This could be incredible. I mean, I think it will be an improvement, but how much of an improvement versus how much will be in the way, that ultimately we'll have to see. My number three is going to be Marvel Zombies. Marvel Zombies as Zombicide game is my number three. At this point, you might be wondering, well, if this is your number three, what are your two and one? Well, we'll get to that in a second, or you can just look at the timestamps and see. But Marvel Zombies is my number three, my, mo my third most excited crowdfunding campaign from 2022. This is Zombicide, but with the Marvel Zombies, the Marvel theme on top of it. I've played this game. I've enjoyed this game. I think this does an excellent job at A, being difficult. This is a game that really, really challenged us and really gave us a hard time as far as how easy it is or isn't to actually win. But it's doing that while adding on the Marvel IP, which I do you enjoy if it's put on top of a good game and it's doing all of that while giving us a, a major changes to the zombicide system and changes that i think overall work Again, I've played this. There's two different versions of it. You can play as the, the heroes. You can play as the zombies. There's a bunch of different things you can do over here, but it gives you a ton of hero variety. Off the bat, the biggest thing this does is every single hero is unique. You no longer have a case of having a pool of like 30 skills that is all just a crossover of different characters utilizing them. Every single hero comes to the table with their own unique skills, making them completely different. When you want to play as Black Knight versus Loki versus Spider-Woman, there's not going to be a single skill crossed over between any two characters, and that in itself is going to give you enough reasons to dive into that. Combined with the fact that you have a way of playing head-to-head -head Zombicide, which could be an absolute bust. I'm not quite sure of that. We have the Galactus the Devourer, which I'm totally not interested in. I mean, I'm interested in for my shelf and how it's going to look, but I'm not interested in for the gameplay. I don't imagine that will be incredible, although who knows? Time will ultimately tell. But this gives us a ton of content. It gives us a very expensive price point, but I am very excited for all the stuff that Marvel Zombies is going to deliver. I just think there's an absolute ton here, and I'm very, very, I'm very excited for all this stuff. It's my number three pick. My number two, and you might be surprised that this beats Marvel Zombies, but it, it does beat Marvel Zombies. My number two is Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia, which actually just delivered a few days ago for me, Encyclopedia is going to be my 2022 pick that beats Marvel Zombies, my second favorite crowdfunding campaign of the year, and this game was just so good, or is so good, not was, it's on my table, it's not on my table, it's on my floor, ready to be put on a shelf, actually ready to be played again. Encyclopedia is just an excellent experience, giving me one of the better, or possibly one of the one of the best, I don't know how good we are, we're willing to go here yet, give us some time, but one of the best midweight Euros in my collection. I love the chaining of Encyclopedia. I loved it. I mean, this game just did such a good job for me as far as the way every single action cascades into giving you a different bonus. I love the puzzle of Encyclopedia. I haven't touched the expansion content, but I just loved how everything this game did made you feel rewarded. I really appreciated the puzzle. I really appreciated how the different ways you can try to score points. I, did, I really appreciated all the experts you can get your hands on, experts that will give you different ways to augment your own abilities and what you're trying to do and how you're trying to do it and the different pathways towards victory. This is one of those few prototypes that I've kept in my collection. I've played it again and again and again and again. I've introduced it to my game group and I'm excited to finally have the physical game on the table where I no longer have to sit there and, and play with the prototype, which is nothing wrong with the prototype, but I'll have all the expansion content. I'll be able to into it properly. I'll be able to sleeve my cards because I'm not sleeving prototype cards. That seems like a waste. But 
This is Encyclopedia. This is my second favorite crowdfunding campaign of the year. I'm incredibly excited to dive into the game that finally showed up a few days ago and, and give it a, I mean, I've, I've already played it. I've already played it. This is a game that feels rewarding at every turn. I'm multiple, multiple plays deep into this. I'm not even remotely bored yet. I'm not. I played it solo. I played it competitively and I played it again and again and again following the crowdfunding campaign. This is my number two pick Encyclopedia. And my number one pick is going to be another command campaign, but this time it's going to be Cthulhu Death May Die, Fear of the Unknown. As much as I love Marvel Zombies, as much as I love Encyclopedia, Cthulhu Death May Die is the gift that keeps on giving. At least for myself, it's the gift that keeps on giving. This is one that continues. Every single time I play Cthulhu Death May Die, I have a good time. The power ramp, the creep, I've reviewed this game, I've covered this game multiple times, multiple ways. This is the game that made me fall in love with crowdfunding, and it's one of my favorite games of all time. Cthulhu Death May Die is an incredible experience that just gives you a cooperative experience that you can just sit there and roll dice and plan around and have those moments down to the wire. This is a game where every single time I play it, I don't know who's winning or who's losing until you get to the end. I appreciate the tension of the game. I appreciate the balance of the game. The fact that as you power up, so are the enemies. As the enemies power up, so are you. And that gives you just a degree of escalation and tension that other games don't give me in this to this degree. Many other games give you, you feel like you're losing, you feel like you're winning. This one, I just, you feel... Whatever happens, you're just constantly ramping up towards the end. And this particular Kickstarter campaign gave us a bunch of cool content, including including these two gods that play off, Nug and Yeb, who play off each other. Two gods that, depending on which implementation is on the board, one affects the board, one is on the board. There's a ton of cool content, a ton of exclusive content. There's more investigators. There's more relics. The relics are a fun new thing that are added to the game that I'm very excited for. There's additional monsters, so you can have more monsters mixed up into the experience. I'm just excited for more Cthulhu content. It's one of the few crowd. It's one of the few all in pledges where I've basically played almost all of the content I have. Not all the content, but almost all of the content I have has been played. I'm excited to add more stuff, particularly the relics, particularly the more investigators. Some of those investigators were particularly enjoyable. Overall, Cthulhu Death May Die is my favorite crowdfunding campaign of 2022. And that's the list. That's all the games we have, all the campaigns we have to go over. 14, three that were really examples of things I'm not excluding. One that kind of felt like it didn't make the, the top 10, but it was outside there. And then 10 campaigns to go over. As usual, not as usual, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to check out the other remaining 15, feel free to jump on over to Patreon. We can go ahead and subscribe and just watch all the extra bonus content we'll have for 2022 lists. And in any case, until next time, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite crowdfunding campaign that you backed or didn't back. Just what's your favorite crowdfunding campaign of 2022 and why? And until next time, I hope you have a good one.